So, um, hi, I'm Jeff, and I have a problem. I like to do, <coughs> sorry, drink. <laughs> I like to do bad things towards programming languages, and for the purpose of this talk, that means Java. Um, Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna, right before I get into this, I, I do wanna say that this is really like a 40 minute talk distilled into 20 minutes. So I have a lot more material in the slides than I'm specifically covering. I go through it really fast. And uh, you, I recommend going through the slides on their own uh, at some other point um, since they have a lot of gems hidden in them. Uh, but so getting back to it, what does this talk about and why does it matter? Um, this talk is about injecting uh, JRuby and Android applications to do function hooking. And this might be useful to you if you reverse Android apps or if you develop them. It's just another debugging tool, honestly. Um, or if you have some strange fascination with Ruby and or REPLs. So um, going back in time a little bit, um, I was reversing this chat app called Line that's really screwy. And aside from the pro guarding and stuff, which doesn't really matter, um, the main annoying part of it was that everything was like an interface of something else. And it was really annoying to find out what objects actually were at runtime. And I was just writing a bunch of one-off hooks to like see what the object was, and then then go off and do it again. And this was getting real boring real fast. So I, I decided, you know, what, what if we took all the interesting functions and wrapped them in REPLs? You know, so you, you drop down to like a shell, and you just kind of poke around at runtime and see what things are and see what they have inside them, all ad hoc style, so you don't have to like write some code and then run it and write some code and run it all over and over and again. Um, so to take a step back a little bit, let's let's talk about kind of what the the things you can do on Android right now are. So you can use LD preload. It's pretty old school, native native hooking with native code for native functions. You know things like libc calls and stuff. Um, I'm kind of skipping code as as I go. I, I recommend going through my slides as I said. Um, then then of course there's actually using the debugger, which is basically um, the JDWP that you have in the normal JVM. ADB uh, exposes it, and there are various ways of, of getting into it, either being an app debuggable or you know you have root and stuff. The useful things from it are that it can uh, list all active instances of objects uh, of all Java objects, and when you set breakpoints, you can actually execute code in them from the context of the frame where the breakpoint got hit. Um, so you can hit like uh, you can touch like protected stuff and, and private variables that can be hit by the code normally. It slows down the app massively, though, like almost to the point of being unusable. Um, but it is useful for things. Um, it, there's a lot of GUI stuff, a lot of GUI stuff. It's all terrible, and even the command line stuff for it is is basically toxic. You you, you hit up and you get this horrible like a character thing because it doesn't handle like arrow keys. Uh, but it works. Uh, moving on, we have Frida. Which is sort of the new hotness. Uh, for a while, it works on Android. It actually stomps over the actual instructions in memory to, you know, jump to its own hooks. Um, it also recently has the capability to uh, inspect and list all the active Java objects, so you can just tap one specific object. The function hooks are generally speaking implemented in JavaScript, which is uh, not not something I like, but uh, but it works for many people. And if you don't want to do that, you can use the um, the native C slash glib code. Um, free to gum to to do hooking with anything that compiles down like you know native code. Um, there are many ways to get it working, um, but the hooks are fairly simple. Um, then of course we have Zygote, which is the uh, uh, sorry exposed, which is the uh, kind of big main framework for doing function hooking on Android, which actually modifies Zygote's uh, sort of init process that forks into the actual apps. And the really nice thing about it is that aside from being like Java first or Dalvik first, which means you just write stuff that actually kind of has native reflection access into, into the code you're hooking, the other cool thing is that it hooks like always at the start of app start reliably even early in boot. Um, and so you can, you can get very reliable hooks running without missing them by accident. Um, it, it has a lot, a lot, a lot of scaffolding. But eventually you get to something like, something like this where um, it's, it's more or less the same thing as the, the JavaScript code. Um, so now I have a question for you. Who, who's that Pokemon? Parasect! Meowth. Meowth, that's right, right. No, that's, that's wrong. Sorry. Parasect. Parasect was right. Um, so why, why am I talking about Pokemon in my talk? <laughs> um, so Parasect is a mushroom Pokemon, and if you didn't know, um, the mushroom part on top of it is, is actually the Pokemon. The, uh, the bug is, is a dead husk uh, kind of marionetted by the mushroom at this point. The, uh, the dead white milky eyes are, are sort of a hint. So uh, why, why, again, why am I talking about this? So um, my, I, I wrote a tool called Paraspecter, and uh, it, it carries basically all of the same roots as, as uh, Parasect does for the puns and things, plus, uh, plus what I got from uh, introspection. Um, and, and we get this cute little guy. Um, so what is it actually, though? Um, 
Paraspector is a function method hooking tool for Android uh, focused on Java. Um, it injects a full JRuby interpreter into a target process so that you, the, the hooks that you run are JRuby. Um, they're easily reloaded every time you, you restart the, uh, the app as opposed to exposed where every time you change the code you actually have to reboot the phone itself. Um, it's implemented using exposed but of course the Java part doesn't change when you, when you change your hook. Um, and it has a bunch of uh, selectors that you can configure based on classes and methods, such as superclasses or interfaces that are actually implemented by a class. Um, it'll it'll just figure it out at runtime. And if you don't want to pay the searching cost, you can just hard code the name of the class in. So if you if you just want to figure out what you want to hook, you can you can use these, and then you can hard code it later so that subsequent runs are much faster. Um, not that they're much slower in general. Um, method matching uses the method name, the argument type signature, the return type, and the exception signature, and then whatever the the total set of those combined, uh, it'll it'll find it. Or you can be as vague as you want. If you want to just hook two string on object, uh, anything that subclasses object, you're you're going to get a lot of stuff. Um, Ruby or JRuby really specifically is, is pretty useful in this case, much better than Groovy was when I attempted it the first time. Um, it has very good interop with, with the Java parts. Um, there are only a few cases where you have to do a little bit of reflection to get around some of the annoying ProGuard stuff, but in general it doesn't really matter. The really useful thing with the way that I loaded in is that I loaded under the sub, uh, under the class loader that is actually for the app itself. So it has native access to load classes from the app without reflection. Whereas with exposed you would, you'd have to use a lot of reflection to manipulate things. Um, the other cool thing is that because of this, you can actually define your own subclasses and imp interface implementers uh, for the Java code of the actual app itself and then plug them in any functions that like take a callback function basically. Um, but I kind of started this conversation with REPLs and I'll, I'm getting back to it now eventually. Um, I use this thing called Pry which is a much better REPL than IRB, the default one that comes with Ruby which also didn't really want to speak well over the network. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of fancy stuff that allows you to introspect um, the sort of Ruby still runtime, but also the Java one because of JRuby, much better than IRB would have ever. Um, I use this thing called Pry Remote, which is a, a gem that kind of wraps uh, Pry with this crazy, crazy thing called DRuby, which is the basically Corba for Ruby. And if you know what Corba is, you're shaking or throwing up. Please, please do it in an empty seat next to you. Um, it has no authentication by its own, which is scary because it's basically without without even like using this to send strings to eval, it basically is a dual eval between the client and the server in any direction apparently. Um, so it's super scary and doesn't have authentication. So I, I modified it, at least the one I install on the phone um, to add authentication. Then for the one you run locally, I have an authenticating proxy I wrote to sort of speak to that so that at least other apps can't compromise the one that you're actually hooking when you're hooking it. Uh, then you, you drop down into uh, basically with some connect back, a tmux window that just pops up with your shell and things work. For apps that don't actually have the internet permission, this, this needs networking and so I have a bunch of hooks in uh, using exposed that will basically force the internet permission in apps that don't request it. They really don't like that but I get it to work anyway. Um, for configuring all this, this monstrosity, I actually have a Jetty servlet web app I actually run from the device itself which was an exercise in frustration but it, but it works. Um, and all the edits that you make are actually tracked in a, in a Git repo on device. So if you really screw something up bad, you can always um, like ADB pull that off the device and revert back to what you need to. Um, it's also worth mentioning that that has authentication as well. That works decently enough. Um, but uh, overall, the flow is pretty simple. Um, it, it, you edit config files. They are world readable uh, so that the hooks that run within the context of the app you're hooking can read them. Um, then I set up the JRuby environment. And then I iterate through all the classes to do the searching and selecting and stuff. And then exposed actually I use to set up the actual hook. And then that hook runs your Ruby code. Um, this is kind of what a hook looks like. It's kind of quick and dirty. Um, we hook this method in this class. And then we just kind of print out what the argument is and move on. But for anything more involved, you'll use something like this where you actually have a file that you can also edit through the, uh, the web interface. Um, which looks something like this. And this guy disables uh, cert validation, cert pinning, and also hard codes my, my HTTP proxy so that all the requests made using OKHTTP OK go through my proxy even though they normally speaking ignore the, uh, the system proxy setting and like the Wi-Fi setting. Um, you'd think this would be slow, but I, I cheat really, really hard wherever I can. Um, so my, I try to load as much of the JRuby in at uh, zygote init. 
Um, and because of the way I do it, I have to play some reflection dark magic so that I can force in the class loader of the app to be the parent of the JRuby class loader so that the classes resolve correctly through the app instead of just up to the default set of classes in Android um, that Zygote can see. Um, due to some bugs in Android, I can't actually set up a whole container instance that runs the scripts in Zygote because if Zygote takes too long to start up, the whole thing deadlocks. I have no idea why this happens. It's really spooky. I'd like it. To, I'd like to see it get fixed. Um, but uh, so I have to. I have to start up the containers actually in the app itself, and this this takes like six to seven seconds generally. But I try to paralyze it out so it's not observable until a hook actually runs, and then it, it'll it'll have to actually finish before the hook will run. Um, for the class searching and stuff, uh, because the normal like class loader searching stuff actually searches the parent class loader first before it searches the child, I yank out the internal class loader for the, the dex classes stuff on Android um, using reflection and then I run that and that saves a ton of time. Um, there's still this problem with uh, basically the threading. So um, there's this, the class loader lock, you can't actually load a class between, it, it'll, it'll lock when you try to load a class. And so the more threads you have, the slower it goes. Um, so I, eventually I might start parsing the dex files manually, but I'm not at that point yet because I haven't hit that as a performance roadblock yet. Um, things run fast enough. This went from like taking 30 seconds of overhead to being quote unquote not instantaneous, um, which means that if you hit that six to seven seconds, you have to, you have to pay for it. Um, searching is fast enough unless you hit something like the Facebook app, which literally has 100,000 classes in it as of the last time I checked. And uh, because of the threading thing, that, that takes a while to go through about 30 seconds. Um, yeah. Um, but this is still a lot faster than exposed stuff which you know you write your Java code, you compile it, that takes however long that takes. Um, you actually copy it to the device and then you install it and then you have to reboot the phone and wait like two minutes for the whole fi thing to finish if the phone's encrypted. So let's, let's do some demos, shall we? Let's hope the demo gods are with us. So I have um, this phone you can see on the screen. Let's, let's do some math, shall we? Uh, what's a good number? You know, the life, answer to life, the universe and everything. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's get there, shall we? Last two. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's interesting. That's, that's not supposed to happen. I think that, well, apparently we have a new answer. Um, so, so moving on, uh, like, to what, what that was, um, I have this hook and hopefully it's, it's seeable from the screen without too much of the flashing giving people epileptic seizures. But um, basically I have this weird method in the proguarded code. It has this horrible function sign signature but it returns a string. The string it returns is actually the result of the calculation. And so whenever the, I, I, I invoke it specifically um, within the code and then when the value is something I like I do something entirely different. Um, moving on, I have this, this UI demo where basically um, I, I have a bunch of buttons and you, you click the buttons and they, they do stuff. And, and this, is, this is bad. If you've ever seen Yu-Gi-Oh! abridged, you know that that last button is wrong. Let's do that one more time. You see that's now, that's what I'm talking about. Um, attention duelist, my hair has an announcement. Um, so the hook on this is basically just on the, the text view stuff in the, the UI and I actually, when I see this hello duelist string, I, I completely replace the on click listener associated with the button. So the event handler for the button, I replace with my own implementation that subclasses the on click listener class that is, is what it actually needs as an interface to pass it to. That, so this one is now, when I hit the button the first time, it swaps out with my own uh, class instance. And then the second time, I actually jumps straight into my code, no hooks anymore. Um, and so moving on. Now let's, you know, this is fine and good and all. Let's, let's tweet. Oh, what's this? This is a shell. Who are you? Oh, main activity. Hmm. Let's just do some math for me. Ooh, 10. Okay. So, so this is, I'm, I'm in the shell right now. I have access to all sorts of things. This is the pry. But let's, let's tweet. Does anyone have any, have any requests? I know I'm asking a weird question to a weird crowd. Anyone? Anyone want me to tweet something? Anything? Yay? yay? Okay, yay. <laughs> okay. And now we're back, we're back in the app. Um, and I actually, oh, I need, I need internet. That's, that's important. That's, that's super important actually. Let's see if that worked. If it didn't work, I'll do it again. Nope. So we'll, we'll do it one more time. I have, I have the on resume method hooked. 
And so every time it goes back to the main activity, uh, it'll it'll jump back into my hook. Uh, yeah. There we go. Okay, back here. Let's see if it did something. Yeah, okay, that one works. Okay, cool. Networking. Yeah, how does it work? Uh, so this this hook is is a little bit interesting, um, if only because uh, let me skip past that. Th these are the proxy ones uh, from before from the slides. Uh, this one is a little interesting because the uh, the code for this I, I actually just made my own method that does a whole bunch of horrible reflection and stuff into uh, into the insides of the Twitter app, and I, I figured out what the actual necessary functions to call for their REST APIs are internally that actually do the tweeting. I have no idea how to make replies right now. There are some weird parameters in here in this map thing that I think have to do with the reply IDs and stuff, but uh, whatever, it works. Um, one interesting thing is that I do the, I do the load class with reflection, if only because there's this uh, this A field here, which is a static. Uh, when you have a static in, uh, internal class, nested class that matches a static field um, with the proguarding, you you sort of have to do this because the resolution order in JRuby uh, takes the method uh, uh, or takes the field first and not the not the class. Um, but uh, now where where can you get this magical tool? You'll you'll be able to get it there soon. The installation stuff I want to clean up just a little bit. Um, there's no way I'm getting around having to reinstall it twice because of the thing with the internet permission. The, it actually sets up a hook for itself so that it can grant permissions itself, but that requires you to reinstall it so that the second install the hook runs in the package manager that then allows it to take the permission. Uh, so only it can take the permission that it needs to grant permissions, and only it can be used to grant the internet permissions to apps that don't request it. So that's at least pretty secure and locked down. Um, limitations: the DRuby stuff is super scary. I'm going to get to it. That's probably going to be its own talk, honestly, um, since it's just super, super dangerous. Um, adding gems not quite supported yet. Requires some shenanigans. I'll, I'll probably get around to that soon. Um, so the stuff with the gems, I might make a UI to do it fancier. I might just make it easier to do in the build process. Um, the UI could use just a little bit of work, maybe. Um, Android 7 compatibility isn't there yet because Expose doesn't support it yet. Um, if and when it does, I, ha I know what I have to fix. Um, if it doesn't, I, I have some plans on how I can, I can stop using Exposed, but I'd, I'd prefer to use it because it's, it's useful for a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'd like to thank a whole bunch of people, specifically um, Arcos, the Scorpion Rider. Uh, AKA Josie, our former intern, who I basically sacrificed to this thing is a lot for QA work. Um, she wasn't able to make it out here th today, but uh, uh, thank, thank you, Josie. Um, are there any questions? You. Oh, you want to know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. So, uh, Trump. Ruby has has this this wonderful thing. It's just string replace. So if we we go search for our, um, well, maybe not our favorite president, but a president. I mean, some, someone's favorite. Uh, you know, he uh, he apparently is a fan. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh, was that a, no? That wasn't a question. Okay. Anyone else? No. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>